Okay, so we gathered for another sculpture forum, and we got to be, um, we gathered in person. And we're looking at a screen with some lovely images that the wonderful Maud Britt has taken of the show of Helles Cabrera at the uh, America Society. And we're going to be talking about the sculpture that is in there. Um, there's quite a lot of sculpture in the show, and it's also a kind of historic show with some archival material, mostly photographs, um, and a big scrapbook and all kinds of things. But, but um, a lot of sculpture, nearly all of it quite small. I'm not sure that, that that's a question of her having only made small sculptures. I think she must have made quite a few large pieces and one or two big public works. Um, so it may have been a matter of what was transportable, uh, you know, within within the limits of the budget. I, I was pleased to see this show because uh, um, Helles Cabrera is um, somebody whose work I didn't know. Um, she is evidently an important uh, person in the field. Uh, she's thought to be or considered to be the first female Mexican sculptor. She was born in 19, I think, 24. As far as I can judge, she's still alive. Um, and I didn't, as I said, I didn't know the work. Uh, uh, and and uh, was, was, was glad to find out a little bit about it. I, I don't know what you guys thought about the work. I think um, Karen, we're joined by Karen Wilkin this time, which is very nice, a distinguished critic, historian, and curator. And I'm joined, as usual, by Jock Ireland and Brant Johnshow. And this particular forum is being um, filmed and will be edited by Maud Britt. Thank you, Maud. Karen. Well, like you, I, I did not know the work. Uh, I'm not know very knowledgeable about uh, Latin American art or Mexican art. Uh, I think it has to do with what languages I speak. And uh, it was uh, interesting for me to discover this artist. I'm cynical enough to be aware that since uh, the phenomenon of Carmen Herrera, uh, every dealer and presumably every curator in the world is searching for an aged, overlooked Latina woman to exhibit. And we, I think, have all seen a number of exhibitions that have been motivated by that. Not always the most exciting exhibitions uh, going. Uh, so I, I did have some of that feeling, although obviously she was a pioneer, obviously she was doing something at a time when, as far as I know, uh, other women were not. The work seemed very dated to me. It seemed uh, very much of its time. And there were really not very many pieces that I was deeply engaged by. Uh, you know, she seemed to settle for things rather than to really explore the implications of things. Uh, I mean, when I started looking at the show and I saw those early nudes, uh, the, the two-dimensional ones, my heart sank. Uh, and the sculpture was definitely better than that, uh, but the bar had not been raised very high. Uh, what did you all think? Yeah, I thought the work was dated too. I, you know, and 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 you know, seemed very derivative. One could think of various sources that presumably she was familiar with um, through reproduction in magazines and things that. I don't think she traveled widely. Um, uh, and and uh, at the same time, I thought there was a kind of a sweetness, almost an innocence about a lot of the work um, and, and, and a tenderness. Um, you know, there were qualities that, that uh, I, you know, I, I could find in the work, but I, again, I didn't feel that that she had uh, grasped 
the essential nature of her talent and what it was she was mm -hmm. trying to do. Uh, there were some pieces that I liked quite a lot. Jock. Yeah, that, uh, uh, you used the word derivative uh, at some point recently, and I was thinking about that, and there uh, are sort of obvious uh, connections to Henry Moore and um, Lipschitz, and sort of almost copies in the in the show, but also uh, you know both Moore and Lipschitz, the early twentieth century sculpture, went back to uh, uh, pre-Columbian uh, Mexican slash Mexican work, uh, uh, and. Uh, and I, I, the, the derivativeness uh, is is still. I, I was attracted, or I wasn't put off by the derivativeness. The things that she was attracted to are uh, still alive for me. Or there's a richness about Henry Moore, a richness about. Um, um, Pre-Columbian sculpture that is exciting, and it um, it it was fun to think about what she did, uh, and she didn't sort of stay with Moore. I, I kept f feeling that she really should have been in touch with, uh, or maybe was uh, aware of Henri Lorenz, but there. Um, uh, that's her real father, uh, uh, and that you, you talked about sweetness and innocence, Garth. It, there's something of that uh, uh, that excited me by. Uh, or I was excited by that in her work. Yeah, I, I, I am glad you mentioned Henri Lorenz. I wish she had um, known his work and, and you know, maybe dug into, you know, the relationship between what she was doing and what, what he what he did. Um, I, I think he's a wonderful uh, mm -hmm. sculptor, and I would love to see a real substantial show of his work. Um, it's interesting you're, you're mentioning the uh, connection with pre-Columbian sculpture, which is much more potent in Henry Moore oh, yeah. uh, than it is in hers. Yeah. Now, maybe that's because she wanted to avoid what she felt was obvious as mm -hmm. a Mexican woman. But uh, there's the one reclining figure, a uh, small male rec uh, reclining figure, which is the one that is the only one that seems to have any kind of relationship to anything like the chalk mall figure that's, that were so mm -hmm. important to Henry Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that surprised me. I mean, some of these, you know, sort of splay-legged figures reminded me of certain uh, terracotta pre-Columbian things. Mm -hmm. But that seemed to be a less uh, potent influence for her than what, I, like uh, Garth, I surmise she was seeing in reproduction uh, in magazines. Right. Yeah. No, the, 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 the work seems to, you know, aspire to be modern and contemporary, you know, in a way that, that uh, you know, becomes more evident in, in some of the very late pieces in the far room, um, where she's um, doing some strange things. What's striking is that given when she was born, uh, she obviously was growing up at the time when Mexican muralism was flourishing. So she would have been very aware of that kind of uh, nationalist imagery. Uh, she would have seen it, and she seems to avoid it. Yeah, uh, as I said, I mean, this, she seems to, to very urgently want to, to, you know, be included in what she, as I understand from what, just looking at the work, what she thought was going on uh, in in Europe um, at, at the time. Um, there were some photographs of her dancing 
And uh, I don't know, Karen, do you see any I, connection? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, but some of the poses, yeah. are, I, you know, I feel like she was feeling out the pose herself. Uh -huh. uh, the piece you mentioned, Karen, uh, was that the little reclining figure in the first room? Yes. Yes, I yeah. thought that was one of the nicest pieces yes, in I the show. Too. I really liked and, that. And it was sort of blown up in the second room. Yes, there's yeah. a, a stone carving yeah. of it, which somehow or other had lost a lot of the... The, the little uh, one I thought was better. Yes. There was also one in the second room, which was one of the few where she got away from by, that one with the raised leg in that image. Uh, the higher figure is one of the few where she she didn't relentlessly pursue the bi bilateral symmetry. Graham. Well, I dissent. You dissent. Yeah. Um, I've I've been exposed a couple more times previously over the last couple years, so I, I mean I have a, a certain advantage there. First off, I don't believe in the bar uh, Ad Reinhardt tree. I mean, I think it's a literal belief system that doesn't account for the kind of asynchronic. I, I think the progress of art is, is not calendrical and linear and uh, sequential. And so I think there's a there's a kind of like a an almost intangible back and forth between an artist who's a contemporary of Moore mm. in uh, Latin America and an artist like Moore who is you know picking and choosing forms from far away and there's something a a kind of inherent monumentality that Cabrera picks up on that I think, you know, more kind of uh, approaches from an entirely different perspective, you know, and is self-consciously investing these forms with, with a, a Western sense that, you know, takes them in another direction. I think there's a certain... Um, you know, what I would take for a certain kind of naivete and development in her work, that somebody like Moore, you know, with Western academic practice behind him, um, you know, can kind of make more of some of the same forms. I think also that there's a kind of analog between what she does with, uh, you know, call it 40s, 50s sculpture, of the West, and what the Latin American architects did with the international style. So, so I see this kind of freedom in her work, and and I kind of you know in a sense I have blinders on for it, because I I look at it in this uh, dyschronic fashion for things that for possibilities and 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 use. And I see a lot of like dangling possibility there and, and, and kind of interstitial presence where there's, she's onto some quality in, you know, call it the, the trunk of 40s, 50s sculpture that's, that's underexploited. I was interested to hear the word naive coming up and that because occasionally I kept thinking about uh, Nadelman and the, his figures that are clearly influenced by uh, unschooled artists. Uh, it was just a kind of fleeting flavor every now and again. Maybe it was the simplicity of the modeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I fully kind of grasp what it is you're, you're saying, Brent. Um. And, and I don't, I don't hear a kind of enthusiasm for the work that, that would be somehow or other underpinning what it is you're saying. I mean, it's not an issue of, of um, y you know, whether the work is, is y what the influences are, and it's not a question of progress or, you know, um, 
who's ahead of who in what field or anything like that. It is just a question of how, for me, just how, you know, how I respond to the work. Now, obviously, you know, the context out of which the work comes and into which it is being seen by me affect how I respond to it profoundly. Um, and, and I I think you're saying that the context from which this work comes in some way, um, if if I were more intimately aware of it, it would, would affect the way I respond to it, are you? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the, uh, the notion of derivation came up. But I think I think this stuff, uh, you know, kind of slips past that. Um, I think I see a certain naivete in formal development, like in understanding how deep a void can get and how you know what kind of swell you can get into a, a, a prominence, but. Um, but overall, I see it as a as almost a kind of a parallel endeavor rather than one that shares a point of origin with, you know, it's for simplicity's sake, say Henry Moore. I don't really see her responding to Henry Moore, uh, you know, piece to piece. Um, well, where her relationship to her contemporaries. Uh, seemed most desperate was in that group of pieces at the end, the one made of rope and that really terrible constructed piece and like, you know, no, 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 mm. no, you should not be showing these. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, to embrace the idea that she had, a, you know, a, a, a real feeling for, for you know, um, that's, um, um, three-dimensional form, um, you know, and, and a sense of um, being able to make forms that would fall and, and uh, they don't, you know, fit, although they seem very often to be quite soft and, and, and uh, squishy, they don't feel hollow, they don't feel empty. They don't feel inflated. Uh, you know, she had a real kind of sense of about uh, you know sculptural form. Yeah. And movement in space. You know, uh. I don't see a lot of movement. Really? Mm. There's. Some, I feel like I'm. I, I'm seeing something at birth, like something coming forth. And it, it's interesting that so many of the pieces are small. I, I don't sense that they're maquettes. I sense that they're, that they're monumental at their small size by, you know, connecting to a, a quality that doesn't depend on size. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I would look, I looked at rather carefully the, the, the little reclining figure the small version in in the first room, and the larger version, which is which is on the floor uh, uh, of it, uh, which is just under life size, I think, or it could be life size for a quite small person. Um, and it's a carving. The the piece in the, the little piece uh, is a bronze cast, presumably modelled in clay. Uh, and the differences. Um, Suggested to me that she lost, you know, she didn't really grasp what was, to my mind, to my eye, what was, uh, gave the work a certain kind of strength, a certain kind of um, uh, strength is not the right word, uh, a certain sense of inner order. Uh, because it, 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 the, the larger carving lost something of the qualities of the smaller piece. Um, 
lost its structure somehow, lost its inner order. Do you think the smaller pieces were um, made in plaster first or modeled in clay and then? Yeah, I think probably modeled in clay and, and, and there were some terracotta pieces, weren't there, that just fired. Yeah. Um, I'm she's, sure, sorry, go ahead. She's not an expansive, attention-grabbing personality. Uh, there's something inherently modest. And I, I, it almost seems like she's at her best, like at her most powerful, most kind of playful and, and also, uh, you know, mm, sharpest, most probing in the smaller pieces. And yet she established her own yeah, monographic museum, museum which yeah. does not speak to yes, and overwhelming a, modesty. Right, no, and there's a scrapbook uh, with 144 pages of, <laughs> of uh, uh, press cuttings. Um, so she, she certainly had a lot of attention. That's very Moore, no? What? The scrapbook, I thought, was, ah, Moore. <laughs> now I see the connection. Well, I mean, you, I mean the, 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 the work is, this show is modest in its scale and, mm -hmm. and, and in some ways modest in its ambition. Um, you know, but 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 uh, and, you know, tender and 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 caring and and sensitive and you know, um, but I get you know I, I, I get this feeling that she didn't really know what she was doing, mm -hmm. and and she was not operating in a in a in a community that had this kind of um, critical mass of people who were, you know, working alongside her in a community of, that was sufficiently kind of... Um, but what, wasn't she part of a group for a while that were doing public work? Yes, small group, I think. No. But, but I, mean, I, I, I may be wrong, but I mean, I get the feeling that the work wasn't in dialogue directly yeah, with, I, I, with I other... I agree with you. With I other, agree you with know. you. And the only reason I'm raising the thing about the uh, the group is that I, I did have the feeling that this was someone working in relative isolation despite the attention that was being paid and you know, did not have mm. other sculptors or other artists uh, in the studio or, or visit their studios. It doesn't have that yes, feeling that, of that, engagement. Exactly, I completely agree with exactly. you. Exactly. And, and at the same time, she was obviously being, um, you know, getting a lot of, uh, of uh, recognition and attention and applause for being this pioneer woman sculptor in a, in a, in a culture where sculpture was thought to be man's work. Um, well, as it was, you know, when I went unlike to this, <laughs> unlike our own culture, yes, exactly. Um, so I, I mean, you know, she may have indeed been been sort of seduced into into a kind of comfort uh, by that by that attention and by that uh, recognition. Uh, of her pioneer status. Uh, the, the, the question, I mean, it's expensive to cast things in bronze. Uh, did she have means? Was she... Uh, where did she fit into the social structure of the time? And the questions do come up. Yeah, the exhibition really didn't make that clear. No. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of, a, you know, present-day examples of uh, certain sculptors I'm aware of, uh, one who is no longer alive, one who is very much alive, who have the means to uh, make careers for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's not that, that's a phenomenon, not not you know that goes on all over the world. I think. Um, oh yeah. You know that, that if you have the resources, you can uh, 
you can make a career, you know, for yourself. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm left slightly confused by, by your, your um, what you've said, because I don't, I don't really know, I don't really get an understanding of the, the extent of your enthusiasm for the work. I mean, Jock was enthusiastic, I thought. Karen and I were kind of muted in our response, I think, and uh, you're somehow dangling there, not quite sure whether you are deeply in love with this work or just critical of our lack of understanding. Um, I'd answer the, the last question, the first question last or first, if I could possibly remember what it was. Um, I think there's really something there, and I think it, you know, with with some exposure to, um, uh, like the the anthropological museum in Mexico City, so forth. She really, she has a certain conversation with things that aren't so familiar to us, and this this sensibility, this uh, understanding of the world, and and even on a, a cosmological sense, that is different from ours. So I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm aware of this thing sort of in a, in a kind of Nottleman-esque way, like playing back and forth on uh, a world of its own uh, with something exotic. And, uh, you know, that in itself is interesting to me. But some of those small pieces, I think, are really kind of knockout. It's unevenly so. Um, but I would predict that I see, uh, you know, more the next, the next time around. I think the, the kind of the, the timid and naive and, and very interior qualities are, are real. But there's... Um, Mm, you know, something lively and personal that I think was not easy for her to bring out and, and maybe not easy to trust that um, impressed me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, um, Maud, thank you for doing this. Um, this is a postscript I wanted to do to the Hellas Cabrera discussion that we had. At, you know, I think often... Um, uh, when we finish a discussion and listen to the draft of it before it gets posted, I, and I expect Brand and Jock and anybody else who's participated, have afterthoughts and think, I wish I'd said this or remembered to say that or said this differently, whatever. Anyway, this is the first time I felt something, you know, there was an omission that was so egregious that it really did need to be kind of just added as a footnote. And, it, and it's about... Um, Barbara Hepworth, and, you know, it's astonishing somehow that none of us, and I guess me as the British artist, uh, should have, you know, said, hey, Barbara Hepworth. Um, Barbara Hepworth, you know, was born, I think, in uh, 1903, so she would be approximately 20 years uh, Kabira senior. And I don't know whether, you know, Kabira knew or of, of Hepworth and Hepworth's work or, or vice versa. Uh, you know, if they did, it's fascinating. And if they didn't, the comparison, I think, is still absolutely intriguing. Um, Hepworth, was, Hepworth was very close to, I mean, she and, and Moore, were working very closely, almost collaboratively, in the very early days. I mean, the work is so similar, and then and then it diverges, and uh, Hepworth becomes more severely kind of abstract. I guess she would think of it all. Other work references natural forms, you know, seashells, bones, and that kind of thing. And Kabira stays relatively figurative until very close to the end. But but at one point, though, you know, Hepworth and Kabira work was very similar. Um, uh, and, and I think the early work of Hepworth and the work of Kabira 
that mother and child that I sent you the image of is, is a you know, pretty good example. And I don't know, I just think it's an intriguing comparison. I mean, you know, if, if Kabira did know of Hepworth and, and, and her work and her career, then she was clearly a kind of model. I mean, they were both, I, I think, considered pioneers in the sense of being women, you know, professional sculptors and kind of the first serious major sculptures, sculptors of, of their era. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of Hepworth's work, although, you know, it, 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 what was clear to me when I looked at it and thought about the relationship was, uh, you know, I'm much more kind of, I don't know what to say, but, you know, able to come to terms with Hepworth's work more easily. It's as if it's sort of European and... Uh, Whereas there's something, you know, and I wonder if this is something that Brandt was trying to poke at and talk about. There's some way in which I'm, I'm slightly uneasy talking about Kabira's work because it, it's, you know, it seems naive, and yet I wonder if it really is. And that, that's about all I wanted to say. Um, so thanks for doing this. <laughs>